Hello and welcome to CD Puck. I am Colin and today I am playing Battle Grills, a game about propane grills that are also mechs. JK. Finally you arrive. Takiro is our name. What a fancy place, Takiro thinks. From the front it looks like a regular school with just a little more added security. There should probably be someone here to greet you. If there were, perhaps they could give you an introduction. But it's very late now. You were supposed to have arrived hours ago, but just about everything that could have gone wrong did. The first bus you rode broke down after a whole two minutes of driving. The next one you got on had to take a detour because there had been an accident on the main street. But worst of all, the restaurant you took a break at while waiting for your taxi gave you a bad stomach ache. Hey, which way do I... You turn around to question the taxi driver, but he's already gone. Go. Right, whatever, let's just get this over with. I'm too cool to care. Going through the main gate, you find yourself in a gorgeous, gigantic courtyard. No signs or directions anywhere. You figure that it's best to just pick a direction and stick with it. That way you'll hopefully bump into someone. So this is a dating sim sim thing with battle girls. <laughs> uh, visual notebook thing. Visual book, visual dating sim book. However, it has gotten quite late. Go through the courtyard, head to the gym, enter the building, and walk around. I guess I'm going to go through the courtyard. The courtyard seems like it's roughly in the center. At least I might be able to spot someone from there. Your feet carry you across the walkway. This is very opulent. Not what I was expecting at all. Suddenly a soft feminine humming sound trickles into your ears. Hem, hem, hem. What in the world? The question dies on your lips as you stare at the tall, well-endowed woman who's dancing on the grass. Oh yeah. Is she seriously dancing around in her nighty? I love this place already. Hum, 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 hum. The woman doesn't seem to have noticed you yet. You wonder if your exhaustion has gotten the better of you, or if you're hallucinating. Standing in silence, you watch for a little longer as she sweeps about. Her every motion is like liquid silk. Is she sleep dancing and singing? I guess that would explain her outfit. I better walk away already. If anyone sees me, I'll be branded some sort of sex pervert. Then again, I suppose I could risk asking her for directions, but is it worth the chance? Uh, thong. Uh, wake her up. Maybe I should ask her. I'm already lost as it is. Besides, she could get in trouble for being out here like this. It would be rude to leave her to her fate. Alright, it's decided. It is decided. It is decided. Excuse me! Bah! Who? What? What? Oh, did you see that? She did like the little M. Bison, like, like, shadow move? Whatever. Why am I. Sorry to interrupt you, miss. Could you please give me. Before you can finish the sentence, the woman runs off. Seriously? How darn ungrateful. So much for getting her help. I should have just left her there. For real, though. Why are good manners so hard to come by nowadays? Dag nabbit. Are we a 75 year old man? Now alone and discouraged, you continue on your way. But for some reason, your heart still skips a beat when you think of her. Oh, thong girl. I guess even rude women can be cute, too. Hmm. What a start for my first day. I can tell that this whole thing is just going to get better. Not. The writing on this visual novel is pretty good. Usually it's, like, really shitty. M. Bison. You yawn, groggily staring at the woman before you. Well, hello there. Who am I, you be? My name is Takiro. I'm supposed to be joining the school as of today. Classes are already over for the day, but I suppose things happen. Greetings, Mr. Takiro. I am the director of this academy. You may simply call me Asensha, as I hold no official military ranking. Wait, really? Why not? I'm Bison. Because I am a neutral party. You already know how it works at this school, don't you? She air quotes, smirking. 
Members of the military from every single country come here to participate and to win in the new war. Isn't this the same plot of Gundam W, where they're like, Russian Mac fights American Mac fights, uh, Canada Mac? <laughs> it's really apologetic and super nice. For that reason, someone in my position has to remain neutral, you see. Oh, right. Well, moving on, you look rather out of sorts. Was your journey truly so terrible? Be honest. Kind of, yeah. It was like every possible delay that could have happened, did happen. Why isn't that important? Not much of an introduction, but alright. Who would say that out loud to someone? She giggles, snapping her fingers. It's hardly my fault that you're late. You'll have to learn on the go, Mr. Takiro. Well, it had after been someone's fault. The question is just whom. Uh, Sensha reaches into her desk and pulls out what looks to be a flight helmet. Put this on, please. I mean, put this on, please. <laughs> okay. It's snug and clings hard to your head. There's no rebreather, and your vision is filled with lights. After a moment of adjusting, you can see that there's an opening near your mouth, and that the lights are from machine readouts. What is this? Just testing gear. It's currently reading your brain length, so I can judge your suit interaction capabilities. After that, I'll we'll test along. You can remain in a neutral state before your stem is exactly depleted. <laughs> I'm gonna stop doing that. It shouldn't take long. You sit breathing uncomfortably through the gap in the helmet and watch as the lights cycle around. Despite the discomfort, you could almost doze off like this. Essentia reaches into yet another drawer in her desk. How many drawers are in this desk? Pulling out a bottle of dark looking liqueur. Now I'm jelly. Well, I'd love to offer you a straw, but you know how these things go. Nobody drinks whiskey with a straw. <laughs> what you choose to do on your own time is your own concern, of course, but you're in my office right now, so you must sit and behave. Great, she looks like the naughty teacher type, but she's actually the strict teacher type. Just my luck. The blinking lights inside the helmet are starting to give you a headache, even with your eyes closed. How much longer is this going to take? Essentia doesn't answer, instead pouring herself a glass of alcohol. You can almost imagine the taste. Your stomach suddenly grumbles, you haven't had anything to eat or drink for a while. Goodness me, you should be take better care of yourself. You let out a muffled sigh and try to get as comfortable as you can, so you take your pants off. You should only last a half hour or so longer. You're a handsome one, but I imagine that your rating isn't very high. Rating? What do I look like a teacher to you? Yes, you do, actually. And a really hot one at that. I think for when she did the final frames of her M. Bison thing right there, she was naked. Somebody check the tapes. Essentia frowns, though it's quickly melted by whatever she's drinking. Left with no other choice, you sit there in your chair and wait. Half an hour passes in discomfort, and you fidget, unable to doze off or relax properly. Worn out yet? To find worn out, I've got a headache, but that's about it. Okay. She gets up and walks behind you, grabbing your head without warning and inspecting you. May I help you with something? I said, yeah. Maybe she really is the naughty teacher type. Just checking the tester, it's odd that you aren't half asleep right now. Dang it. Well, it's kind of hard to sleep with this clunky thing stuck to my head. Is the test almost done yet? Surprisingly not. Yeah, see? At the end of that... Well, M. Bison animation, she's totally naked. She shrugs and leaves without a word. A few minutes later, the woman returns with some food. Here's a snack for you. You should probably keep in mind that if you want to eat something this late, you'll have to cook it yourself. The tray Essentia puts down only has a glass of water and some ration bars on it. The thought of consuming them makes your mouth feel dry and uncomfortable, but the growling of your stomach wins out. Thank you. Ah! There's that familiar sound. Your stomach lurches and starts, ugh, and stars start to blot out your vision. 
The helmet's quickly pulled off your head. You feel like you've just come up from underwater to breathe. Gah, what was that? You nearly fall from your chair as you flail in alarm. Take a deep breath, please, Mr. Takiro. You'll be late for class if you dawdle, and I have to go update your rating. What are you talking about? What happened? You took longer to test than expected. You even fell asleep during, which is quite frankly unheard of. Congratulations are in order, I suppose. Now hurry off the class. She probably ticks you out of your care. All you can do is try to shake the snow from your body. This is absolutely the worst day ever. So I just stayed in there all night? The sun points you in the right direction, pushes you out the door with a yawn, and shuts it firmly behind you. I have no freaking idea what just happened, or anything else that happened today either, I guess. Isn't it tomorrow? You reckonly head in the direction you were pointed to. <laughs> and of course, war used to be a terrible bloody farce that yielded the loss of many lives, says Kariko. When battle suits were first introduced, they were often used to lay waste to entire cities. With that being said, they were also instrumental in ceasing the bloodshed. As it turns out, when the fate of your country's entire well-being is tied to a single combat unit, you stop needing regular soldiers. You look around the classroom, scanning over your classmates, each clad in their own neat combat clothes. With that thought in mind, the world agreed that a central location would be decided and used to host a problem-resolving tournament. The results of these new wars can shift economies, governments, trade deals, and... Wake up, people. They pulled me out of the pits to run this class. The least you could do is pay attention. Oh, that's the teacher? It's a struggle to keep your eyes open. You feel tired and gross. What you need most right now is caffeine and a proper meal. There's no arms on that clock. What time is it? Takiro, am I boring you? You bite down a yawn. Shake your head, drawing eyes from the rest of the class. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Man makes me feel old. Call me Kariko. Takiro. Does everyone here hate titles or what? Jeez. Yes, Kariko. I'm Takiro. The woman taps idly on the gigantic wrench she's carrying. I can't even see it. it. Must be behind the word box. This is your first lesson here, isn't it? You nod sleepily. I recognize that look well. Your Panzor rating was just tested, wasn't it? You nod again, nearly tipping over. Tell me what you already know and I might let you take a nap. It takes an effort for you to fight back down a groan as you force your brain into action, but the chance of rest helps you chug along. Where's the robots made out of propane grills and the anime girls? Oh, there's an anime girl, okay. I sat around in a chair wearing some uncomfortable helmet for a few hours. Apparently, it was testing my ability to link up with... You pause to stifle another yawn. A battle suit, which is based on your mental and emotional state, and honestly, it's super tiring. Hours, that's certainly rare. Well, although it's only a very basic summary, you're still correct. We use a system known as the Panzor rating. Helps to judge your ability to synchronize with a battle suit. Isn't this basically Evangelion? Minus the Gundam Wing aspect of it. Person's Panzor rating is placed between 0 and 100. And yours is. She plucks up a pad from her desk. 90? Wait, really? She looks at you in surprise, and muted gasp escape from the majority of the class. Are they all invisible? Because I don't see them. Is that good or bad? No one told me which side of the scale is positive. You yawn, and your head meets the desk with the clunk. That would explain your extreme exhaustion. Any number above 80 is considered Abby normal. For real? You blink yourself back into reality again. My mom always did tell me how special I mean. I thought she was just being nice, but... Yes, the bodily stress of achieving near-perfect suit sync tends to be immense. 100% sync would mean you could become the machine itself, so you're really not far from a full connection. That's why suits have co-pilots, you know. They piggyback off your link to the suit and run the manual systems for you. Co-pilot? Manual systems? I've never heard of anything but those. I feel like I'm missing something pretty big and obvious. Kariko rubs her temple, sighing. You were dropped off here yesterday to fight tomorrow, and yet you weren't told any of these things? This is a real problem. You should have had a rep explain all this to you beforehand. That probably should have been the greeter who never showed up, damn it. Listen up, and then you can go get some sleep. 
I really wish everyone would stop gossiping behind my back right about now. Don't they realize I can hear them giggling? Why do these characters keep on embisoning back and forth? This is driving me crazy, by the way. God, they don't need to go ch -ch 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 after each sentence. The pilot moves the suit and makes the final decisions. You're running the show, essentially. Your co-pilot sits up front in an admittedly more vulnerable position. They give tactical insight. I haven't been assigned. Don't you dare interrupt me. You zip it, especially when you hear the sound of Kiriko's knuckles popping. They give tactical insight because you have a hard time observing everything while you're in the suit. They also enable weapons and judge damage intake for you. <laughs> what were you saying? I haven't been given a co-pilot yet. True, in fact, you've been given co-pilots. Plural. Oh, they're all sexy anime girls. I'm sure you'll be seeing them soon, considering their current absence. You're dismissed for now, Takira. Go get some rest. You stand up, ignoring the stares of the rest of the class. Maybe class isn't the right way to think of this. We may all, no doubt, be in a classroom together, but this is a school of war, an academy for combat. Myself and any of them could be fighting as early as tomorrow. You shuffle out of the room and take a deep breath of fresh air. This is a lot to take in, all things considered. The thing called the new war, instead of lives, honor is on the line. I can't help but wonder how times are different now that there are relatively few casualties and conflicts. Check yourself in for your room number, fighting the urge to sleep out under the sun. My country has never won the tournament before. They must have found out my Panzer rating at some point, and that's why they sent me here. If only they'd been considerate enough to tell me and give me a year to prepare or something, but common sense is too hard to come by, I guess. You finally reach your room. You start to reach for your key when you realize that the door is slightly ajar. Warning sirens cough in your head. Great, in here I thought things... Couldn't possibly get any worse. Now if only they let us be armed on campus, but at least I'm not... Tell you this is coming by. I'll just play a collect natural and be ready to dodge. Dip, dodge, duck, dodge, dart. You open the door as though there isn't a problem in the world. Yet no guns fire and nobody throws a surprise punch at your mug. What the heck? You don't find yourself looking back at an assassin. No, what you're looking at is far more surprising. It's a good, 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 good girl. Times three. Three girls. You must have gone out of Texas class early. We just got some drinks. Want one? Is that the er dancer from last night? Yeah, on the far right. Ch -ch -ch -ch. You exchange glances with the tall blonde, but she seems more confused by your stare than anything. She doesn't seem to recognize me. I won't bring it up lest we get off to a bad start. Can I help you, ladies? Please tell me I'm seriously just walking into a free, no-effort harem. Please don't be dreaming. Er, we're all your cold pilots, Kiro. Kiro, really? That makes me sound like a mascot character from a magical girl anime. Like a little cat. I see. The women look at each other and then at <laughs> your blank stare. You really didn't know about us beforehand? We've been expecting you since last week. What? No, I didn't. That's just unbelievable. How in the world is that even possible? Even the faculty didn't know about my Panzor rating until this morning. Plus, I didn't even know I was coming here until two days ago. The redhead sighs, ruffling out her hair and taking a sip from her tea. I thought it was a boozy drink, not tea. Typical. I knew we had terrible logistics, but that was just unacceptable. Maybe we should file a complaint later. Anyway, I'm Sheehan. We'll get through this together from now on. Micah, pleased to meet you. Akiko, and I'm... Sakiro, come on, self, you were brought up right. Well, you all already seem to know my name. You give them a deep bow. Well, I'll introduce myself anyway. My name is Takiro. Look forward to working with all of you, and us with you. Micah's voice is warm and soft. She gives you a beaming smile before sipping at her tea. Seriously, though, I can't believe you had so much tea stashed in here. Yeah, my pop sent me over a crate of leaves and snacks. Tea leaves, that is. Not the illegal sort. Or so I hope, anyway. Oh, shit, that clock said 420. That's why there weren't any things on it. Snacks, too, you say? You can swear her eyes are glowing. I hid them for him. I had a feeling they'd have disappeared otherwise. 
She didn't hum rumps at the buxom blonde before lifting her cup to her lips. Sorry about that. We've actually known each other for a while. It must be difficult to keep up with us. Yeah, maybe we should dial it back a notch. Poor Taiki looks dead on his feet. Ta Taiki? Wait, now I sound like a Mexican food. I'm not sure which nickname is worse. You don't mind the nickname, do you? Oh, uh, yeah, I kind of do. Kiko gives you sad puppy eyes, and you immediately relent. No, it's fine. It's fine. Smiling, the woman moves from the table to the small futon in the corner and then pats the space next to her. You fight down another yawn now that the tension's been drawn to your exhaustion. This is a little much to take in right now. Can't I get some rest once in a while? Sit, you'll feel better. You settle down next to Akiko, the other two women giving you an odd look from the table. Micah gets up to fix you some tea. Meanwhile, your eyes start to flutter a little bit. So please tell me about yourselves and um, explain why I have three co-pilots while you're at it. You seriously haven't been filled in at all, have you? Okay, well. There are three of us because you'll need backups. One or two co-pilots is the average, but you're still new to this. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I need backup. I thought suit only said... I thought suits only sat one co-pilot. Do you have to swap out then? Simply put, yes. When we're in combat, us co-pilots tend to be in the line of fire, so if battle gets tough, well, we aren't going to be prepared to go back out the next day. Plus, there's sync to take into account. You have to be in sync with your co-pilot to perform well sync. Could you please sync on that last sync? It's getting harder to sync and trade. When was the last time I synced? You don't look very good. Maybe we should save that for later. You slap your cheeks, widen your eyes, and sip some tea as it's handed to you. There's no way that I'm going into battle blind tomorrow. I have to hear this now. Right, while well, the pilot really runs the show, they link up with the suit, and the co-pilot basically tags the sink. But the two won't be very efficient if their way of thinking isn't in sync. <laughs> I fucking did it. I'm sorry, I think you'll have to explain it like I'm five years old. My brain cells feel sort of dead. Think of the suit like a river. When you're in control of it, you're a boat in that river. Your co-pilot gets in that boat too, and then you steer it. But we've got to paddle. If we aren't thinking the exact same thing, paddling gets really, really hard. That's a really abstract way of putting it. It's alright for now. I can't understand the signs behind it right now, so metaphors will have to do. Akiko grins brightly. A second later, you yawn mightily. Here. Before you know it, you're laying down, your head comfy on a pillow. Keep going. Oh, well, you want to know about us, right? Anything in particular? Who will be with me for the first battle? I guess that wasn't really about them, but my head is just so shot at the moment. Anyone, we're with you no matter what decision you make, so don't let us down. Sheen pushing her palms together and rolls her shoulders. That said, we're all better at different things. I'm good at going fast and hitting things. That's an awfully crude way to put it. Make us the most tactical of us, she's just definitely the smartest, too. You're insinuating that we aren't smart, Sheen, dear? And Akiko is Akiko. I'm unconventional, I suppose. I came into the military pretty late. So obviously, I'm a lot more fun than these two. Shannon pokes her tongue out, and Akiko un un finishes her drink. She probably get out of his hair now. Make sure to eat and drink properly. Make her finish her cup while you struggle to stand. Unless you'd like me to stay for a snuggle? Hey, heal, girl. Akiko's dragged away by Sheen, forcing you to stand. Mike apologizes at the door and gives you a cheery wave. See you in the morning. See you then, I guess. You stare at your bed. Although exhaustion tempts you to go straight to it, you need to give yourself a moment. You take your time cleaning up the cups from around the world while mulling over everything in your head. Their interesting girls just wish they were courteous enough to not leave their garbage in my room. So rude. You let a long tired John and curse the fact that your brain's in full gear now. A fight between countries. A bunch of mysterious coincidences that have me disadvantaged. Three co-pilots. At least I don't have to handle things alone any longer. When your room is checked, clean, and in order, and the sky is a little darker, you finally give in to sleep. The bed's siren song is far too great for you to do battle against any longer. The sound of pounding is in your ears. You bolt upright, reaching for a weapon that's not there. She and Kiro? The pounding continues to loop. Oh, that's just the door. I must be paranoid. I'm coming. You're still exhausted. Your sleep had been restless and came in small spurts. What time? 
Four in the morning, what the heck? This is unreal. She must have come here for a secret rendezvous with me. She's totally fallen for my charms. So do you want to join me for morning exercises? I know what you really mean. She's so cute trying to mask her intentions. But it's so early. Come on, lazy bones. The sun's already coming up. Will either of us even have the energy to fight after that? Alright, let's exercise. Is it really worth getting in an argument over? Fine, fine. I'm probably not going back to sleep anyway. Takes a moment for you to drag yourself out of bed and tug on some clothes. You open the door to the side of Sheehan staying there in the hallway stretching. Well, that's sure a sight for sore eyes. You're looking rather messy. Now you're a morning person, aren't you? Gross. She smirks and waves you along. Come on, let's do laps around the courtyard. They'll get us warmed up. Does this really have to be so early? You can't blame me if I fall asleep on the track. She doesn't seem to be listening at all. She bends down and touches her toes, giving you a sweet view of her assets. Maybe this won't be so bad. Begin to stretch yourself out. You could almost swear that Shein sneaks a few glances at you, too. Oh my. Hey, if you're gonna stretch, do it properly. What? But I do. You cut off as the redhead steps behind you and places her back on yours, locking your arms together. Here, let's help each other out. Hips against mine. She says hips, but it's more like butts. <laughs> and I'm complaining. Regardless, you do as she says. Gradually, you both lower yourselves down, stretching your calves. She doesn't let you stop, making you go until it feels unbearable. I think I'm at... You unlock your arms from hers and flop down to the side, hugging your legs to your chest before they cramp up. Ah! She tumbles over backwards, and now that you aren't there to support her, a quick pain spreads through your skull. You take a moment to reassess the situation and conclude that Sheehan must have knocked you in the head as she tumbled down. Kiro, are you okay? You shake your head to clear the feeling of painful pressure, but all that does is cause you to force out a gasp. Kiro, don't move. Do I have a concussion or something? Everything's all dark. Wah. You open your mouth to question Sheehan, but all you get is a mouthful of fabric. Eep! The pressure leaves her head as Sheehan leaps to her feet, eyes wide. Sorry, I didn't notice that you were slipping. It's, uh... Were you just sitting on my face? There's one thing to cross off my bucket list. Um, that is... Please don't tell anybody what just happened. I'm asking you nicely this once. This one scary look on her face. I can't even tease you a little. She glowers at you. Glowers? Glowers? Glowers at you. And then points at a jumbled collection of weights. No, hop to it, Kiro. Whoa, I think I accidentally double-clicked. <laughs> Whatever. You towel off your hair through a layer of steam covering the mirror and murky jade eyes stick back at you. Sometimes pilots feel a disconnect between the real world and the suit. Who knows if I'll actually make a good pilot in a real fight. Once I'm in the suit, I'll be more powerful. I'll be able to change things. I'll truly be alive. Your reverie is broken by the sound of a muffled voice calling out to you from behind the door. Taki. Wait, if I can hear it from the bathroom, then... Akiko, are you in my room? Oh, there you are. The bathroom door swings open, revealing a grinning Akiko. My, oh my, Taki, you're quite the spaceman. Well, at least this tower is covering my chance. <laughs> It's pretty funny. Then again, maybe it would be better if I accidentally dropped it. Do I get the option to drop it? Until I do it. Get any rest last night. Not really, kept waking up. That's too bad. It's getting more awkward than I expected. She is starting to feel a little self-conscious. So what brings you here anyway? You must have had a reason to break into my room. Oh, right. You were taking a while, so I was wondering if you were going to class today. Class, but we've got a battle today. You try to motion for Kiko to leave the bathroom, but all she does is stand aside in the door frame. You squeeze past her, casually passing off the lecherous gaze that directed at your backside. She smells nice, I so shouldn't mind if she jumped me. True, but not until the evening you have more than enough time to go to class while you wait. What are my options then? You don't know that already? Hmm. As insulting as that sound, I think she's being genuine. You look at Kiko in the eyes, if anything is concerned. I was dropped off your test, and now I've got to fight in a bit. I really haven't had the time to learn anything yet. Maybe I should help you out, then. How do you plan to do that? I broke into your room, didn't I? I have many talents. I knew I locked the door. What classes do they teach here? There's combat and tactics. Self-explanatory. Sometimes Mechanic Kariko steps in for tactics, but otherwise it's taught through videos and pods, like test pods. Probably guess this, but Sheen performs combat and Micah performs tactics, and you. She pouts coyly. 
I'll just go wherever you go. I don't like either. You're an ad soldier. Says the beautiful scruffy country boy with an incredible pans or rating. Girl just once again said my pans or. He creeps up to your ears and you're once again aware that you're in nothing but a towel. Okay, out. I'm getting changed. Takes you an effort not to look into Akiko's sad puppy eyes. Eventually she relents and walks out of your room. She has an incredible light step. It's like watching someone dance, which reminds me of that time. Oh god. While you're throwing on some clothes, you can start grabbing your combat knife strap. Combat clothes aside, and never seem to be visibly armed. Just being unnecessarily paranoid. Despite your thoughts, you tug it on anyway, strapping it into the small of your back where it won't be obvious. <sighs> okay, so it's Taki Taki, where to? If you won't call me Takira, at least just call me Taki. She pouts at you, looking childish. Alright, I think that's about it. I got a solid half hour to this bad boy. So this was Battle Grills. Uh, I'm Colin with CD Pog. The game's okay. Um, there's not enough uh, conversation branches for my taste. I prefer when there's a lot of that because that makes it more interesting. And I do think I accidentally skipped through that one thing. And it's weird that they always are embisoning back and forth. But besides that, pretty good. And I think it was like $3 too. So it was actually very reasonably priced. And it's written pretty well. So yeah, CD Pog gives it, I guess, a thumbs up rating. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and catch you all later. Bye-bye.